amazing parents, does your child struggle to grab their feet with their hands and get into this baby pose position here? Now, many kids with spasticity in the legs, this position here, any position curled inwards, can be quite difficult to get into. And what many of us parents have been told is to stretch out the hamstring, that, that the reason why they can't touch the toes is this muscle here needs to be stretched out. It's too tight because it has spasticity in it. Now, I want to open your mind to the possibility that it's not just the hamstring that has to do with your child reaching their feet. This movement here can become easier for your child even if they have spasticity or tight hamstrings when their brains know how to coordinate their entire bodies. This movement here isn't just one isolated muscle moving in space, it's actually a whole body movement and the brain needs to be able to coordinate the whole body. One trick to making this movement easier is actually to put the brain's focus on the pelvis. And I'm gonna show you a simple movement that you can do at home to bring your child's brain's awareness to their pelvis to make this movement a whole lot easier, even if they have tight hamstrings or spasticity. Now, the first step is always for parents to get down on the floor and try this yourself. Because when you internally feel that connection of your pelvis to this movement here, you're going to be able to transfer that to your child just so much easier. So go ahead, get down, lie on the floor. So simply bring one knee closer to your chest and see how comfortable it is to reach towards your foot. See how far you get comfortably. There's no need to stretch at this point. We're just kind of seeing where's a comfortable spot for you. So you might only be able to grab onto your knee. You might be able to grab onto the foot. Wherever you are, that's where you are. And that is the first step to working with your child is just, first of all, just seeing where are they? Where are they in this moment? How far can they comfortably bring their knee and their foot up towards their chest? So I'm comfortable right about here. What is true for you? And then simply bring your leg down to the floor and then bring it back up just a few times and just feel how are you doing this movement? What parts of your body are moving to make this movement possible? Are you feeling just movement in this section here, just the leg? Are you feeling movement in your chest? Are you feeling, you know, movement in your toes? Where are you feeling movement? How is your brain creating this movement of bringing your leg closer to your face like this? Now, step number two is bringing your brain's awareness that you have a pelvis that can move and roll in space. And we're gonna explore how that rolling of the pelvis can help bring the leg closer to your chest. So I like to think of my pelvis like a ball that can roll on the floor. Gently and slowly start to roll your pelvis downwards towards your feet, putting more pressure onto your tailbone, and then roll your pelvis more towards your head so your tailbone lifts a little bit off the floor. And just slowly roll up and down like this with your pelvis. Say hello to your pelvis. Bring your brain's awareness that, hey, there's a pelvis that can move, rolling it up and down. Sometimes it helps to put your hands on your hips. So just where your hip bones are, place your hands gently on your hips. And then as you're rolling your pelvis on the floor like a ball, you can feel your hip bones on the top moving as well. It gives your brain a more three-dimensional image. You're basically body mapping where your pelvis is in space and your brain's gonna take that information and make it useful in your next movement. So your next movement is gonna be the third movement here, and we're gonna combine the two movements of bringing your knee and your foot closer to your chest, but also rolling your pelvis like a ball. So as you're lifting one knee and one foot towards your face, think of your pelvis like a ball that can roll upwards, lifting the tailbone a little bit off the floor, curling up into a ball and then as you bring your foot down towards the floor you're rolling your pelvis downwards putting more pressure onto your tailbone so again as you lift your knee the ball rolls up towards your head and as you lower your foot the ball rolls down towards your feet rolling up and rolling down so now as you're doing this movement of bringing your knee and your foot closer to you, can you feel that your foot and your knee are actually a lot closer to your head simply by including the movement of your pelvis? By bringing your brain's attention to the possibility of your pelvis moving, your brain was able to coordinate your entire body to make this movement a lot easier, 
a lot smoother. You can probably go a lot further now. So see if you can grab your foot or your knee in a much easier, higher up location with less effort, with zero stretching, simply by bringing your brain's attention to the potential of moving your entire body. So if you notice a difference in how much easier it is to bring your foot and your knee up to your chest in this position here by simply bringing your brain's awareness to your pelvis, let me know down below what you noticed. And now I'm going to show you how to transfer that information that you felt and you discovered with your own brain to your child. All right, we're going to transfer what you felt in your body to our children. And step number one was simply observing where is your child at? What can they already do comfortably? So I'm going to gently support my child's leg. I like to do it underneath the knee so there's no straining of the knee. And gently and slowly just bringing their knee closer to their chest and just feel. Your child might only be able to go this far before you feel resistance. When you feel resistance, stop. We're not going for stretching. We're bringing your child's brain's awareness to their entire body. In this case, more awareness of their pelvis to their brain, that their pelvis can be a part of the movement. So we're not going for a stretch, going for bringing the brain's awareness to a certain body part, in this case, the pelvis. So I'm gonna bring her leg up wherever it's the most comfortable for her and stop before I feel that stretch or that pull. For some of you, it might be here, for some of you it might be here, for some of you it might be here. Wherever it is, just simply feel and notice. Get curious, oh, it's right here. Interesting, bring the leg back down. And now think of your child's pelvis like a ball that can roll on the floor a little bit up towards their head and a little bit down towards their feet. So I'm gonna put my hands on their pelvis right here. I'll show you on the skeleton so you can see. So this part of my hand right here is snuggled into the hip bone right there. It's like I'm giving their hip bone a little hug. I've got it snuggled in here. I'm not being forceful. I'm not grabbing it. I'm simply giving their hip bone here a little hug in the palm of my hand like this. Safe, supported, comfortable. And in this position here, I'm gonna think of their pelvis like a ball that can roll a little bit upwards and a little bit downwards. Rolling a little bit upwards towards their head, a little bit downwards towards their feet. So I'm thinking of their pelvis like a ball that can roll a little bit upwards, a little bit downwards, a little bit up, a little bit down. And again, it's not the quantity of movement. It's not how far I can bring them. It's all about the quality. It's all about bringing their brain's awareness to that gentle movement of the possibility of their pelvis being able to roll a little bit up and a little bit down. So you can give that a gentle try of snuggling in on their hip bones there, rolling their pelvis a little bit up and a little bit down keeping it slow and comfortable, thinking of bringing their brain's awareness to the possibility of their pelvis to be able to roll a little bit up and a little bit down. So that's rolling the pelvis from the top of the hip bones, the top of the pelvis. You can also roll the hip bone by scooping your hands underneath the pelvis and having the ball rolling in your hand on the floor like this, a little bit up and down. So I'll show that to you as well on the doll. So I'm gonna scoop right underneath my child here so their bum is sitting in my hand, my hands are on the floor, and I'm simply gonna think of a ball being in my hand and I'm rolling the ball a little bit up towards the head and I'm rolling the ball a little bit down towards their feet. So I'm rolling the ball on the floor, I'm not doing a big movement of lifting my hands off the floor, doing anything too extreme. Remember the brain pays attention to slow, gentle movements. I'm going nice and slow, rolling the pelvis like a ball, a little bit up and a little bit down. And then in step three, we can combine the two movements of bringing the leg a little bit up to the chest while rolling the pelvis a little bit up and then bringing the leg down towards the floor and rolling the pelvis down. So my hands are gonna be nice, safe, supportive, gentle. I'm gonna have one hand underneath the knee to support the knee, the other hand underneath the whole tush. The back of her pelvis is resting in the palm of my hand. And I'm gonna gently go with where she's the most comfortable and slowly lift her leg a little bit more towards her chest while rolling her pelvis a little bit up towards her head. 
and stopping before you feel the stretch and just notice, are they going a little bit further than they were before? And then you can bring the knee down towards the floor, rolling the pelvis back down. So you can combine these two movements of bringing the knee up towards the chest, rolling the pelvis up towards their head, and then bringing the knee back down, rolling the pelvis down. Remember to go nice and slow. You're using your hands like a tiny spotlight to shine awareness for their brain of the possibility of moving their pelvis with that motion of the leg. So you're giving their brain quality information that it's going to use to coordinate and organize a fuller more body movement when they simply bring their knee up close towards their chest. And so afterwards you can go back to simply having a gentle supportive hand underneath their knee, bringing it up closer to their chest and just see, do you see movement in their pelvis rolling now? Do you see their knee getting a little bit closer to their chest now? Is the movement a bit easier, a bit more natural looking, a bit more flowing, a bit more coordinated for them to do? Are they able to use more of their whole body to do the movement? When the brain is able to coordinate these quality movements together and have a strong foundation for combining these types of quality movements, they form the base of these larger milestones, such as grabbing their foot, rolling to the side, coming up into sitting. For their brains to be able to coordinate the two movements of rolling the pelvis and bringing the leg up is a foundational movement that they'll be able to use again and again and again in coming up into sitting, in crawling, in coming up into standing and walking. Our brains use the coordination of our pelvis, our whole spine, our heads and our legs all together to make all of that happen. So hopefully that's helpful. Go out and explore that connection between lifting the leg and rolling the pelvis. And if you want more guided movements showing you quality information for your child's brain to coordinate those larger milestones, you can check out the Mindful Movement Program. You'll see the link down below. And I'd also love to hear what changes did you notice when you started exploring the movement of the pelvis? Let me know down below and we'll see you in the next video. Okay, bye!